where the mother converted while she was pregnant. That means Horaso was Shalom Bikdusha. She was conceived, he was conceived when they were not Bikdusha, when they were non Jews. But by the time he was born, so he was born Bikdusha, the mother was already Jewish. So Enachanami, a Ger is not related to his father, even in a case where his mother converted before he was born. But since people might see that you're not going ahead and giving the son anything, that the son is not inheriting the father, in a case where they thought it was a Jewish baby and he had a bris and everything, because Lamai said by that time they were already Jewish, but we know that the baby in fact is not actually Jewish, the baby is still a ger, the baby is Jewish, but it's considered to be a ger because the conceiving was done Shalom Bikdusha, so therefore even though the Leidasa was Bikdusha, we're going to think that the baby was a Jew and that Jews don't inherit, so Lamai said we're going to tell you it's a nice thing, you don't need to, the ger is still not related to his father because the Horasa was Shalom Bikdusha, but we're saying that if you want to go ahead and give him the money, in this case where he's not exactly related to his father, but since he looked like a Jew when he came out, quote unquote, so therefore it's okay if you want to give him the money that you owed the father. Ove Kochavim Yoreshes Aviv Devar Torah. So in Ove Kochavim, if you have two non Jews, so the Ove Kochavim inherits his father. Dichtiv ki Yerushalayim of Nasasi et Har Seir, because we see that Esav inherited Har Seir. Vidil ma Yisrael Mumarshani. They say you can't bring a proof from Esav, because at the end of the day, Esav was a Jew. So maybe a Jew who is a Mumar who rebels, maybe they'll still inherit. But Ena Chanami, a non Jew, should not inherit their father. Ela Mehacha, we can learn from Lot. Ki Livnei Lo Nantati es Er Yerusha. And you see that Lot inherits something, and Lot's not Jewish. So therefore, you see that a non-Jew goes ahead and can inherit their parent. Rav Chia Rav, in my time, Lamar Karav. If you remember from Rava, so Rava on the page before had the source. How do you know that a non-Jew inherits his father? Because it says Vichishav im Konehu. Because you go ahead and you do with Konehu. Again, this was an Oved Kochavim Yoreshes Aviv, and this was telling us that a person who is Oh Nimkar Lo Oved Kochavim, a person is sold to an Oved Kochavim, and then the Oved Kochavim dies. So you don't go to their kids because Nimkar Vichishav im Konehu. You go to Koneo Veloim Yorshe Koneo, but you see that you don't go to the Yorshim of the Koneo, but that still tells us that they have Yorshim. So why didn't they learn like Rava? Miksiv Vechishavim Koneo Veloim Yorshe Koneo, because the Pasuk says Vechishavim Koneo. We made a Diok Veloim Yorshe Koneo, but we're looking for a source. So don't give me a source from a Diok. Give me a source from a Pasuk that says, if the Pasuk would have said Vechishavim Koneo Veloim Yorshe Koneo, if the Pasuk itself would have mentioned that they don't, would have mentioned that non Jews have Yorshim, then it would be a good source. But Rava is just making a Diok that it says, you go ahead as an Evan and you do things with the Koneu, but if your Adon dies, you don't have to go to his Yorshim, and that was a Diok. The Pasuk never said anything about non Jews having Yorshim. So that's why Rav Chia Baravin never said like Rava. So why didn't Rava, who brings another source that non Jews can inherit their parents, and he makes a Diok, what's wrong with the Pasuk from Lot? Because it's not the covet of Avram to start saying that Lot is a non Jew because they Nechanami. They were very close. Okay. Tana Rabbanim. Yesh be'ivri she'ein be'ivriyah. V'yesh be'ivriyah she'ein be'ivri. There are certain things that a Amma Ivriyah has that an Evid Ivri doesn't have and certain things that an Evid Ivri has that an Amma Ivriyah does not have. Yesh be'ivri she'u yotze b'shanim uvi ove lo v'mita sa'adon ma she'ein ke'in be'ivriyah. So an Ivri goes free b'shanim uvi ove lo v'mita sa'adon which an Ivriyah does not. Not true. Keep that in mind. That's false. We know an Ivriyah does go f- Free on Shanim Yovel Amitas Adam, but right now the Torah Gemara is saying that an Ivriya will not go free with these things, and an Ivri will. Vyesh be Ivriya Sharei Ivriya Yotze be Simanim, and the difference between an Ivriya and an Ivri is that an Ivriya goes free when she has Simanim, when she turns a certain age, when she becomes a Bulgaris, when she has Simanim. Ve'ena Nimkaris Venishnes, and she also can't be resold. We'll see what that means. Umafta Nosa Bal Korcho, and we go ahead and we're Podeho, we redeem her against his will. We'll have to see who his will is, the father or the Baal, the father or the Adon. Masha'in can be Ivri which doesn't apply to an ivory. Again, everything we just said is totally false because it does apply to an ivory. So Amar Mar. So Mar says the following. Yesh be'ivri she'ein be'ivriya. There is that by an ivri she'ein be'ivriya. Or minhi, yeseira alav ama ivriya she'kona atza me'simanim. You see clearly that, that we learn in Hebrew, so yeseira alav, that not only does an ivriya go free, b'shanim uviyov alav mitas adon, she's also kona atza when she has simanim. So it's not just that the ivri versus the ivriya. We see that an ivriya has all those things plus. So what do you mean that there's an ivri that that an Ivriya doesn't have, that an Ivriya has Shanim, an Ivriya has Yovel, an Ivriya has go free by the Mitas Adon. It's not true. 
It is true, but in every year also goes free for other things. Amar of Sheshes, no. The case is Kagon Sheyada. We said that when an Amar Evriya is sold, so the father gets money, and now she's officially the slave of the person that bought her. But we said there's something called Yada, which means that he can then marry her without having to give her more money. Once she's his slave, so now she can now he can marry her through this process called Yada. We'll see exactly what this process is. Is it Kedushan? Is it Nesuman? We'll have to see. But Lemaisa, he can marry her, and now he marries her. Again, she might still go free at the end of the six years, but he can marry her, and then we'll see what happens. So the Gemara is saying what? Kigon Yada. Yada Pshita Gitabaya. So the case is, they're saying that the case of Yada, where he marries her, then ain't a Hanami. She doesn't go free after six years. She doesn't go free after Yovel. She doesn't go free if he dies. Because Amai says she's married to him. So in that case, Yada Pshita Gitabaya. That can't be the case. It can't be that you're telling me that we have by an every what we don't have by an every yard. It's Pasha that by an every yard we don't have Shanim or Yovel or that she goes free when the Adon dies in the case where she actually married him. So Mo de Samaloli Badla Hilchasamina Kamash Malan. So why is it not Pshita? Because you might have thought that if the Adon does Yada, again we're gonna use that word Yada, that means the Adon marries her, that if the Adon does Yada with the woman that he bought, with the Amaivriya, you might think that she would still go free because at the end of the day it's not so pashat because at the end of the day he bought her but maybe she should still go free because the yad does like a secondary thing says no in a khanami once he does yad with her once he marries her she will not go free at six years at yovel and when he dies so then why do you just tell me that she goes free when she has a simanim if he did yad with her and that's no if he didn't do yad with her then she'll go free for the simanim so it comes out that an ivri is things that an ivri doesn't have i.e. an ivri a regular ivri has things that an ivri who did yada doesn't have. Because an ivri goes free with Shanim and Yovel and Mitas Adon. An ivri who did yada with, who married her Adon, will not go free with Shanim and Yovel and uh, and Mitas Adon. And when it says that she goes free with Simon, and that's in the case where she did not do yada. The Ainanim Karis Vanishnes. A woman cannot be sold and resold. Miklal de Evid Ivri Nimkar Vanishna. That implies that an actual Evid Ivri can be sold and resold. Tanya, but we know it says big nevaso below big fellow big nevaso below bizamamo big nevaso kevich and nimchar pamachas shuvi atarash elamochar. So it sounds like an ama ivria does not get sold and resold, but a regular avid ivri can be sold and resold. But we see over here he doesn't get resold and sold. Why? Well, first of all, just a few side points. It says big nevaso below big fellow. He gets sold for his gneva. We know that if he steals and he can't pay back, he gets sold. But it's only big nevaso. That means if he steals, and now he needs to pay Karen and the kefel. So if he doesn't have the Karen, and he gets sold. If he has the Karen, the hundred dollars, but he doesn't have the Kefil, the extra hundred dollars, he doesn't get sold for the extra hundred dollars. Big Nevas of Bizamamo. In a case where somebody comes and says, My friend owes money, and he's proven to be an aid zomain where he was somewhere else, in the beginning of Mesachas Makos, he was somewhere else at the time. So now he needs to do whatever he wanted to do to his friend. So he needs to pay the hundred dollars. In that case, where well, he never stole anything, he just has to pay the hundred dollars because he accuses his friend falsely of stealing. In that case, if he doesn't have the hundred dollars, he's not going to be so- sold because it's only Big Nevas. So when you actively steal, the low so you're not, you're not, if it's a knas, Seemingly, yes. In the case of Gnevaso, once you're sold, you're not allowed to sell them again. What does that mean? Once you're sold, you're not allowed to sell them again. So Rashi says that at this point of the Gemara, we think that if he sold one, she can't sell him again. So let's see what the Gemara says. Amarava lo kasha. So you just told me that an Evid Ivri is sold again, and now it seems to be saying in the Bible, so he can't be sold more than once. Amarava lo kasha. Kan bigneva achas, kan bishnei gnevos. No, it says bigneva achas, pam achas, says Rashi. Dim eno shava kog nevaso eno nimkar bishvil chetzia, ukilish ule kishayotse yimkar mishum chetzia. He's saying that when it means you don't get sold twice, it means if you stole $1,000 and you're only worth $500, so you might think that you need to go ahead and do six years of servitude, and at the end of the six years, you got to do another six years to make up for the other $500. So when you stole $1,000 and it's double the value that you're worth, you as the person who stole, there you can't get resold. That means you don't do six years and then get resold for another six years. So what does it mean when it says you get resold? That's when you stole from two different people. 
You go ahead and if you steal from two different people, then you're going to have to go and work for this one for six years and then this one for six years. But it sounds like that if you steal from multiple people, if you do multiple Genevas, it's still considered to be big Nevaso. You're still going to have to go ahead and only be sold once. No, I'll tell you what I meant. Khan be Adam Echar Khan Bishne Bene Adam. What it's really is that when you're dealing with one person, and the way that Rashi explains it is, if you steal from one person, that means not just from one person, but if you come bebas achas, that means even if you do multiple genevas, it depends how many times you come to Basin. So if 25 people bring you to Basin and you stole from all of them, like you had this Ponzi scheme or something, and they all bring you to Basin at one time, there you can only be sold once. That means you're sold once for all of the different things that you did. But if well, this person brings you to Basin, and then this person brings you to another Basin, and this person brings you to a separate time to Basin, every time you're brought to Basin in a Hanami. If you do six years for this guy, and then you steal again, or if you do six years for this guy, and then and it's proven that you stole back in the past for this guy as well. So then in Hanami, you can be sold more than once. So it just means you can't be sold more than once at the same time. What? But you can be sold multiple times. What if you decide to stay with the, this the first owner forever? What? So in Hanami, so then there's nothing you can do. If he's with the first owner, he's with the first owner. But if you uh, do as you described a Ponzi yeah, scheme, then it's stealing from a number of people in one shot. <laughs> That's what he's saying. A filu bignevos harbe. That's when it says big nevaso. Even if you do numerous nevas, at the end day you're only going to get sold once. Who are you going to get sold to again? I don't know the is who exactly you're going to get sold to, but you're only going to get sold once when you come to din for all of the same. But if you go to din with two different people at two different times, nimkar bishvok bishvil kolachas achas. That's the case. Vehu Adin says Rashim Gonav Amar Vedim Vinimkar Vechazar Veganav Mishayatza Chavshi Chozer Vinimkar. Obviously, if you steal, you do six years, you do your time in jail, you come out, right? It's like being sentenced for the same thing at the same time. That's again sometimes the way that we work. Actually, is that you go six and you'll, they'll give you consecutive life sentences. But what it's saying over here is that if you steal and you come out of jail, so in if you steal again, you're going to go back to jail. I think 75 or 80 percent of people that go to jail come out, uh, go back again. So okay, just a side point. Taner Abanan Genevo Ella Fishav. So it comes out according to what we're saying now that if you steal, that if you steal a lot of money, so in a we said you're not going to be sold more than once. Turn about a gnevo ella fishava chamesh meo nimkar vechose every nimkar. So this price seems to be arguing on that. This price says if you steal a thousand and you're only worth five hundred, so you're sold, you do your six years of time, then you gotta go ahead and be sold again to make up for the other five hundred. That's not like we said before. Gnevo chamesh meo vishava elef eno nimkar klal. But if you steal five hundred and you're worth a thousand, then we can't sell you because Lamaisi, you're worth more than you stole. Rabbi Lezer, Mary, Maya, Gnevo, Keneged, Mimkaro, Nimkar, he says differently, he says no. Unless you're worth exactly what you stole, you're not going to be sold even if you're worth less than you stole. Because according to the first Mandi Amr here, if you're worth less than you stole, then you got to be sold twice. If you're worth 500 and you stole 1,000, you got to be sold twice. If you're worth more than you stole, you're worth 1,000 and you only stole 500, then we can't sell you. Because what are we going to do? How are we, gonna, we, we can't sell half of you. Says Rabbi Eliezer, no. Even in the case where you're worth less than you sold, you stole, not only will you not be sold twice, you won't be sold at all because at the end of the day, we can't sell you at all. Says the Gemara, Amar Rava, Behazach Ninul Rabbi Eliezer Rabbanan. Rabbi Eliezer makes more sense than the Rabbanan that anytime you're not exactly. So if you're going to steal, bottom line in the Gemara, if you're going to steal, make sure you just steal either more or less than you're worth. But if you're going to steal exactly what you're worth, then you're going to be sold for your stealing. It makes sense why. Why should there be a difference if you stole 500 and you're worth 1,000? Where we can't sell you because we can't sell half of you. Also it says you need to be sold for your Gneva. So you can't be sold for half of your Gneva. And if you're worth 500 and the Geneva was 1,000, if we sell you, in essence, what we're doing is selling you for half of your Geneva, and that's not going to work as well. So it comes out according to Rabbi Eliezer again, that if you steal, you're still going to have to pay the money, but if you steal, we're not going to sell you unless you stole exactly the amount that you're worth, not if you stole more than you're worth, or if you stole less than you're worth. Says the Gemara, 
We go ahead and we're poda and ama ivria against his will, against whose will. Samarava lameimar ba'al korche da adon. We can go ahead and we can be poda a ama ivria against the will of the adon. That means he bought her for whatever money he did, and now she was worth or she's worth a thousand dollars in the marketplace. We can force her him to sell her for whatever her current value is. Amalei abaye my nihu. What is this? What's going on? What's the case? Dechasvano leishtar adam ye amai nakin marganisa biade yavnino lechaspe. It can't be that the father writes a promissory note to the Adon, because if he's writing a promissory note to the Adon, we can't expect the guy to give up a marginisa, to give up a pearl, in order to take a piece of shard. By the promissory note, it's a piece of shard. All we know is not going to be able to collect on the promissory note. So we don't force against his will a case, we don't force the Adon to take a promissory note for the girl that he has. El Amar Bayi, what's the case? It means Baal Korche Da'av. When we say that we can be poda, so it sounds like the Gemara is saying, of course we could be poda. If we're going to pay him cash, of course we could force him to sell it. But what we're talking about here, the Chiddush, Baal Korche Da Adon, it means Baal Korche Da Av. It means that we can go ahead and we can force the father. What does it mean we can force the father? It means the father sold his daughter for $1,000. He didn't have money, seemingly. He needed money. Now when he hits, now when he strikes a rich and he has $1,000, we see that in his bank account he has $1,000, we can force him to take the $1,000 in savings, even though for whatever reason he doesn't want his daughter back. We can force him to take the $1,000 and to go ahead and to be poor to his wife, his, his daughter. Why? Because it doesn't look nice. It's not good for the other kids, for the Shaduch and for the other kids to know that their sister is an Amar Ivriya, the father forget about what he's going to do now. He already sold the other daughter, so nobody's going to want to marry. So if that's true, so then why don't we go ahead and force the father or force the family of an Eved Ivri to go ahead and to redeem him once he's been sold? If he had to sell himself, let's say, for, for Geneva, we don't force the family to redeem him. Why not? It should be because of Pekah Because if this guy stole and you're going to redeem him, now he's going to go steal again or he's going to go sell himself again and then you're not going to come Accomplish anything. So, but why aren't we worried over here that if we go ahead and we force the father to redeem her for a thousand dollars, and as soon as he gets her back, he's going to sell her again? Haktani, because there's another halacha which we're dealing with here. Eina nimkeres vinishnes. A father's not allowed to sell his daughter more than one time. That means you get one shot. You sell her, you make a thousand bucks. Now, eina chanami, you can't sell her again. So it comes out interestingly. A father can sell his daughter for a thousand dollars if she does yada. If she marries a guy, so then that seemingly we'll get to this in the Gemara in a second. But if she does Yada, so then that's it. There's nothing he can do. But if, theoretically, he sells her and then he gets more money, it sounds like we're going to force him to buy her back. And after we force him to buy her back, so he has no right to sell her again. That's what the Gemara seems to come out. Umani. Who is this who says that a father cannot sell his daughter more than once? Umani. Rabbi Shimon, he, it says, the Tanya, Mocher Adam has bito le ishus vishone. He could sell his daughter for ishus and then do it again. That means he could sell his daughter for kedushin to a boy, again, as long as she's under age, as long as she's under 12. So he could sell her to somebody for kedushin, and now if that person divorces her or he dies and he comes back to the father's rishus, she could, he could sell her for kedushin again. Le shifchos vishone. If she's one year old, he could sell her for six years as an Eved. And then, when she turns seven and she comes back home and she's happy to be home, he could say, no, I'm selling you again and sell her for another five years until she becomes a Bulgarist and then she would go free. He could sell her into Shifchus. He could sell her from one to seven. And then when she turns seven, she comes home, she's so excited, and he could say, sorry, man, next day he could sell her into um, Kiddush, into somebody else. But if, in fact, he gave her to somebody to marry and then that guy died or divorced her and now, he comes, and now she comes back home, in that case he can not sell her again for shifchos. So again, you could sell her in every case. Ishus achar shifchos, shifchos achar shifchos, ishus achar ishus. You can't sell her leshifchos achar ishus. Fine. Says in Gemara, Bishimon Omer, Kashem shein adam mocher esbito leshifchos achar ishus. Kach ein adam mocher esbito leshifchos achar shifchos. So he adds, not only can you not go ahead and sell her for shifchos to go ahead and be a servant after you've already sold her to be an ishus and she comes back home. Also, once you've sold her once for shifchos from one to seven, so now just using as an example, when she comes home at seven, you can't sell her as an Amma Ivriya again. So let's see what the Gemara says. Uwe plukta the honey tonight. This is like the plukta of another brisa. Titania, as it says, bevigdo ba. It says bevigdo ba. We're going to see what this words mean. Kevan shepirish taliso ala shuvein rashi lemocha dibir Rabbi Akiva. So Rabbi Akiva says that once somebody is perish taliso ala, once somebody marries her, so you can't go ahead and sell her again. Now, just outside for a second, we're going to say yesh em lemikra yesh em lemisora. So when you have the word bevigdo ba, so it's either the way you read it or the way that you say it. The bevigdo ba, the way that you read it, what does it sound like? Beged. Sounds like clothing. 
So bevigdoba sounds like clothing. The Yesha and the Misores, the way that it's actually written, bevigdoba, the word bagad means to betray. So the word bigdoba can either mean that he betrayed her or he went ahead and he married her off. So according to Rabbi Akiva, as we'll see in a second, Rabbi Akiva is holding yesh aim lemikra, the way that you read it, bevig doba, like beged, clothing. So bevig doba means clothing, that he went ahead and he gave her to a man who was peresh taliso aleha. He took his beged and he put it over her, i.e. he married her. So kevan she peresh taliso aleha. Once the person went ahead and married this guy's daughter, shuv ein rashay lemocha. If that guy now goes ahead and dies, if the master dies or the master divorces her, the father cannot sell her again. Who's that like? That's like the Tanakama. You have to take a piece of paper and write it out when you get home. I don't know if it's in the art school. But we just said that Tanakama holds. You can resell her. You can remarry her. But you can't sell her after you married her off and she comes back to you. So what do we see over here? Once you married her off and now the husband dies or the husband divorces her, you can't go ahead when she comes back home and sell her again. That's Divi Rebbe Akiva. Rebbe Akiva is like the Tanakama. Rebbe Eliezer Omer Bevigdoba, you do it the way, not that you read it, but the way that it's written, it means betrayal. What do you mean betrayed her? Well, how do you betray her? You betray her by selling her. You don't betray her by marrying her off. Therefore, Kevan Shebogadba, once you betray her by selling her, Shuv Ein Roshay Lamochra. Bevigdoba is selling, once you sell her, you can't resell her. Who's that like? Well, that's seemingly not like anybody, because we said that Rabbi Shimon holds you can't sell her after you sell her. No Shifchas after Shifchas. But seemingly, according to Rabbi Eliezer, if you would marry her off, Ishus, then she comes back to you, you would be able to sell her because you didn't betray her by marrying her off. And therefore, although Rabbi Shimon agrees with Rabbi Eliezer that you can't sell her after you sold her, seemingly like we said before, Rabbi Shimon held, not only can you not sell her after you sold her, you can't sell her after Ishus, seemingly Rabbi Eliezer will hold that by Ishus you didn't betray her, and therefore you can actually go ahead and you can sell her after Ishus. So Rabbi Shimon doesn't seem, Rabbi Eliezer doesn't seem to be like Rabbi Shimon or like the Tanakhama. Where are they arguing about? Rabbi Leizer, Savar Yeshem Lemesores. Like I said, Rabbi Kiva, Savar Yeshem Lemikra. What does Rabbi Shimon hold? That you can't go ahead and you can't sell her after Shifchos. You can't go ahead and do Shifchos after Shichos. You can't resell her. You can't even do Shifchos after Ishus. Which one is that? That's both. Yeshem Lemikra, Ula Mesores. Again, you have to draw out a chart, but it comes out that you have five opinions. Two of them are like two of them, and one of them is by itself. Tanakama holds. You can resell a girl. You can remarry her off. The only thing you can't do is you can't resell her after you had already married her off. No shifchus after Ishus. That's like Rabbi Akiva, no shifchus after Ishus. Because Bevigdoba, once somebody spread their begid, their talis over her, you can no longer sell her off. Yesh aim lemikra. That's the Tanakama and that's Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Shimon says, not only can you not do shifchus after Ishus, you can't do you can't resell her either. Why would you not be able to resell her after Ishus? That's because of Bagad, because of clothing, that he was perish taliso. Why couldn't you go ahead? and do shifchos after shifchos because bevigdoba you betrayed her so again you have both of those things that's where Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Leazar holds you only hold big doba being the yesh aim lemesora it's only if you betray her that means you can if you betray her if you sell her you can't sell her again but if you would marry her off then enachanami you would be able to sell her again I know I'm speaking quickly but that's the dafiomi so if you didn't get it now you'll get it in seven years from now okay boy <laughs> Rabba baravuha boy Rabba baravuha just I'll mention Derek Agav the Mishnah is starting tomorrow. The Mishnah is a Gishmak thing also. It's six years. The Mishnah, two Mishnahis a day, starts tomorrow with Mesechah's Brachos. It's something that's a lot easier to understand. You should continue the Dafyomi, but if you want to complement it with five, ten minutes a day and do Mishnah, there's also even an app, I was just told, from South Africa with the accent and everything. Mishnah Yomi, if you go onto the app store, you go Mishnah Yomi, I think it's five minutes a day. There's it's a very Gishmak yomi. thing. There's Nach Yomi also two a day. There's Nach Yomi, there's everything Yomi, but uh, at least the Mishnah Yomi starts tomorrow. Bari Rabba, speak to men to Ruben for any of the Yomi schedules. Boy, Rabba Baravua. Yeyud Nisuinose or Irusinose. But I would definitely write up a chart when you get home. Yeyud Nisuinose or Irusinose. So we've been talking about the father selling a girl. Let's just re re review again so that we don't get confused. A father has two choices that we're talking about here either selling a girl or marrying her off to somebody, being Makadish or to somebody, and getting the Kesef Kedushin. Right now, we're not going to talk about getting the Kesef Kedushin, right? Getting the Kesef Kedushin means that he was Makadish or off. 
But there's another case where he sold her, the case of Yud that we're talking about, where the Baal, where the Adon then comes and marries her after buying her. That's a case where he bought her first. Then he retroactively, not retroactively, but after the fact, he uses the money that he paid to buy her. He doesn't have to give her more money, and he does Kedushin. So in that case, he basically did two things. First, he bought her, then he did Kedushin. The other option would have been to just do Kedushin with her right away, in the act of buying her to do the Kedushin. So that's talking about when he did the Kedushin. That's how we're referring to Kedushin. Yehud is when he first buys her, and a year later he decides, okay, you're my Alma Ivri, I like you, I want to marry you, I don't have to give you more Kesa Kedushin. That's what Yehud. So the question is, this second thing, this Yehud, where he's had her working for him for a year, and now he decides he wants to marry her. So what exactly is this Yehud? Is he marrying her, or is he doing Kedushin with her? Does it mean that now they're doing the suin together, now they're married like a full-fledged husband and wife, or does it mean that now they're just Mekadesh to each other? What's the Nafkamina? The Gemara says, Well, if Yehud, a year after he acquired her, now he does Yehud with her, so if it means that now they're fully fledged married, then he would inherit her, he would be able to be Metame for her if he's a Kohen, he'll be able to be made for Nidara. If it's only Erisin, it's only Kedushin, it would be the equivalent of him being Mekadesh from the beginning, when he acquired her from the from the father, so then he can't do any of these things. My, which one is it? So we're going to bring two proofs, and we'll reject the first one, obviously, and then bring the next one. Toshma, the Vigdoba, we brought the opinion before. Kevin Shapir's Talisa Allah, this is Rabbi Akiva, Shuvay Narashai Lamachra. Once she was married, so he can't go ahead and sell her again. So what's the case here? Zvunehu delo mizavinla. That means she's married. Now she comes back to her father's house because the husband either dies or divorces her. Seemingly, that was the husband who bought her. The Adon either dies or divorces her. So it sounds like zvunehu delo mizavinla. It sounds like the father now, when she returns to his house, cannot go ahead and sell her again. Just as an aside, this Gemara is very complicated. I know I'm making it sound easy, but it's definitely complicated. So if you're not getting everything I'm saying, don't think that it's easy Gemara that you're just not getting. It happens to be a very complicated Gemara. But... Well, my side prepared it, so it's a little bit easier for me. Zivunehu delo mizavinla. When she comes back to the house, he can't sell her again. Hayeyud miyaidla. But it sounds like what he could do is he could do yiud for her. Now, what does that mean? The iomart nisuin osa. If you're going to say that the yiud that she did with the first husband, the way the Gemara is learning now is that what? It doesn't mean that he sold her for kedushin. It sounds like he sold her to a man. The man did yiud with her. Then the man died or divorced her. Now she comes back to her father's house, and now he wants to go ahead and sell her again. If you say that Yud is actually Nisuin, Kevan Denise Shuvain La Via Rishuspa, we have a separate halacha that once a woman marries, once a Nara gets married, if the father actually marries her off, again, not Kedushin, but Nisuin, if the father actually marries her off to a man, if a man does Nisuin with this girl, and for whatever reason she comes back to the father's house, a father only gets one shot at marrying her off for the daughter. He has multiple shots at being Mekadesh her off. If he gets her engaged to one man, it doesn't work out. He could do it to another man. It doesn't work out. He could do it to another man. But once she actually marries a man, he no longer has a right to marry her off again. So what could it be? So it must be what? It must be that if in this case, she went ahead and she was sold to a man, and he did yayud with her, and now she comes back to the father, and the father has the right to go ahead and marry her off again. It must be that what? It must be that the yayud that the first guy did was not Nisu, and it must be that it was actually Erisin. Says the Gemara, El alav shmami na Erisin ose, Amar Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak, no. Hacha bekidushin da Alma kai, no. That was a case of bekidushin da Alma. That was talking about a regular, that wasn't talking about a case where a father sells the daughter and did yeyud. That's just a regular case Case where a uh, Nara, where a uh, Katana did Kedushin with somebody. In that case, where a, where a, where a Nara did Kedushin with somebody, the Kedushin was in Chal. A Nara can't go marry whoever she wants. V'hachi kamar. Kevan she masra aviyah lamishin is chaye b'she'era ksusa v'onasa shov ein yachol lamachra. All it means is that if the father goes ahead and he marries her off in a regular Kedushin, and he, she actually marries somebody, so then the father can never go ahead and resell. But that doesn't tell us anything about the case of Yehud. That's a regular case where a father marries off the daughter. She marries the guy. He's chayiv in she'er k'sus ona. Now it doesn't work out. She comes back to the father's house. In that case, shuv eino yachol amochor again. But you can't bring a proof of the case of yehud because you haven't shown me a case of yehud where then the father cannot marry off. If you could show me a case of yehud where she then returns to the father's house and he can't marry her off again, that'll prove that yehud was nesuin. But you haven't shown me that yet. Says the Gemara, Tashma. I'll give you another proof. Ein mochra lekrovim. The halacha is 
that according to Tanakama, you can't sell her to Krovim. Again, I'm a father, I want to sell my daughter. So I can't sell her to Krovim. Why can't I sell her to Krovim? Well, according to Tanakama, you have to have the potential for Yehud. Well, there is no potential for Yehud if I sell her to Krovim because they can't marry her. So therefore, I can't even sell her to Krovim. Even though they're not going to actually marry her because they're Krovim, the fact that there's no potential to even do Yehud with her, I can't sell them to Krovim. Mishum Rabbi Lezer, Amu, no, Mochru Krovim. You could sell them to your cousin, you could sell them to your brother, you could sell your daughter to your brother. You just, they can't do Yehud with her, but it doesn't mean, just because there's no potential to do Yehud, doesn't mean that they can't buy her as a slave. Vishavin Shemochru Amana Lekohen Gadol. And everybody agrees that if there's an Amana, you could sell her to a Kohen Gadol. The Kohen Gadol can't actually do Yehud with her, can't marry her, because she's a Amana, but you could still sell her to the Kohen Gadol. Grusha Vachalutz of the Kohen Hedyon. Hai Amana Hechidami. So let's concentrate on the case of the Amana. Again, you have a case of an Amana who you're selling. Well, if you're selling an Amana, so what's the case? If you're selling an Amana, that sounds like it's a it's a it's a Nara, it's a young it's a it's a young girl. She was married to somebody who then either divor well, it's not a divorce, because or else she wouldn't be an Amana. The husband died, so she was married to an Adon, seemingly, or to a Baal. The father married her off to a Baal. Then the husband died. And now we can go ahead and sell her to a Kohen Gadol. She can't marry the Kohen Gadol, but we could sell her now. She's still under twelve. He could sell her to the Kohen Gadol. Amana Hechidami. Elima de Kadesh Nafsha Amana Karila. If she herself went ahead and was Mekadesh to some man, then it wouldn't be anything. She's not an Amana. She was never married to the man. Ella de Kachavi. So the case must be where the father went ahead and he was Makadesh, the daughter, to a person. The person died. Now she returns to the father's house, so he could sell her to an Amman, he could sell her to a Kohen Gadol, but he can't go ahead and the Kohen Gadol can't marry her. Me, Matsi Mizavinla, if it's true that the father actually was Makadesh to somebody, can he actually sell her now? But we know that we learned before, according to one man de Hamar, that you can't do Shvachos Acharishus. So how can he go ahead and sell her? Even in a case where her father was just Makadesh the girl to a person. Person. And now it didn't work out, and now she comes back. So forget about the fact that Kohen Gadol can't marry her. How could he even sell her at all? Lemay said, once you do Kiddushin, you can't go ahead and you can't sell it to somebody else. This is a case of Kiddusha Yehud. So what's the case? The way that he's learning it is, I sold my daughter to Mr. X. He went ahead after a year and he did Yehud with her. Now when she comes back to me, the halacha is, I can't sell her because ain't shiftless achar ishas. Well, what do you mean? We're saying over here, I could sell the amana to the Kohen Gadol. The amar nisuin ose, kevan shenisei shuv ein la'aviha rishus ba. So again, we're seeing a case here where it must be that the father sold the daughter to a person. That person did yield with her. Now she's coming back to me, the father, and I'm able to sell her to the Kohen Gadol. The Kohen Gadol can't marry her, but I could sell her to the Kohen Gadol. So what are the options now? So now the Gemara says, the fact that I could sell her to the Kohen Gadol, that I could sell her to anybody, shows that the year that she did with the first husband must have not been Nisuin again, because if it was Nisuin, so then, Eina Hanami, I would not have any right to sell her again to anybody else. So it must be that Yehud is Erisin. Yehud is Erisin, it works well, no problem. Sholem al Yisrael. Says the Gemara, the Elamai, Erisin Osa, it's Erisin. Says the Gemara, Shavin Shemochra, Haina da Mochra Bito, Lashvachas Acharishas. But it asks, a more, it asks a more basic question. Okay, I can't sell her. Lamaisa, again, there's two things here. Is that I can't sell a girl once she's actually been Nisuin, once she's been married to somebody. And I also can't sell her after she's been Ishas, after she's even been Mekid. Kedushin to somebody, right? We said, there's you can't sell a girl. You get one shot at Nesuin, and then there's a separate halacha that what? There's a separate halacha that you can't sell your daughter for shifchus after Ishus. You could do Ishus again. That means if she gets at and married to somebody, then you can't marry her off to somebody else. But if she actually only did Kedushin with somebody, then you could do Kedushin to somebody else. But if she did Kedushin with somebody, I can't do Mechira to somebody else. So even if you would say that the Yehud is only Erosin, how does that still give me a right after she did Erisin with a guy? What right do I have now to go ahead and to be Makadish or to somebody else? Or to sell her to somebody else, I'm sorry. How could I sell her to the Kohen Gadol? Again, you're proving to me the fact that I can sell her to the Kohen Gadol. So it must be that the Yehud was not Nisuin, it was Erisin. Because if the Yehud was Nisuin, then I can't go ahead and sell her after she did Nisuin. So the question is, even if the Yehud was Erisin, once she was Makadish to this guy, again, it's the equivalent of Erisin, now when she comes back to my Rashid, us, we know that ain't shifchus achar ishus. Once I sold her for ishus, so ain't I could go ahead now and I could go ahead and I could do ishus, but I can't do shifchus achar ishus because the maaser that's not allowed, as we said. So says the Gemara. 
It must be that Eris in Dida is different than Eris in Davia. What does that mean? Says the Gemara. Look at Rashi. Shani Eris in Dida. The cave on Dehulo Kitcha Yacholamacha. No. If you would go ahead, again, what it means is that if I, the father, am Makadesh her to somebody else, then she comes back to me. I can't then sell her. When it says Ein Shifchas Achar it means I was Makadesh her to somebody else. And then I want to sell her now. I can't do that. I could be Mekadish to somebody else, but I can't sell her then. Ain't Shifchas Acharishus. But in that case, I wasn't Mekadish her to the guy. I sold her to the guy. He himself was Mekadish her. Again, that was the two parts. Either you could be Mekadish a girl straight to the guy, or you could sell her and then he could do Yeid. So when it says that Arison works, so again, Nisuin will never work. So if Yeid works like Nisuin, doesn't matter if I had done the Nisuin directly with him, or I sold her as a slave and then he did the Nisuin. If yeah, it is Nisuin, I have no right to ever sell her again to another guy. I have no right to sell her to marry her off. So it can't be that Yehud was Nisuin. I, how could it be that even Yehud was Arison? So he says it's okay. Because if I make Kadesh her to a guy, then we hold that when she comes back to me, so I can't sell her off as a shifra. But in this case, I wasn't Mekadesh her to anybody. I sold her as a slave. Whatever she did with this guy, if Yehud is Arison, she decided or he decided to do Yehud. That wasn't my decision. So I'm not going to be penalized when it didn't work out. Now she comes back to me. I can go ahead and sell her as a slave to the Kohen Gadol. The only time I can't sell her as a slave to the Kohen Gadol is when I actively lechadchila was Mekadesh her to this guy. Now when she comes back to me, ain shifchus acharishus. But when I did the Mechira to him, when I sold her as a slave, and then they chose to do Yiyud, whether she has a choice or not is a separate conversation, but they chose to do Yiyud. Now that case, when she comes back to me, the Ein Ishas, Ein Shifchas, Achor Ishas will not apply to that case. That's what the Gemara says. Says the Gemara again, very nice. So then we could say the same thing. Maybe Yehud is Nisuin, and maybe in a regular case where I marry her off to a guy, then I can never marry her off again. But maybe in a case where I sell her to the guy, and then she does Yehud, which is maybe even Nisuin with the guy, then she comes back to me. Maybe in that case I can, in fact, sell her off because she did the Nisuin and I didn't do the Nisuin. Says the Gemara, no, there's a difference between Nisuin and Arison, and even if it's her doing the Nisuin versus me doing the Nisuin, even if it's just her doing the Nisuin, I still can't sell her off afterwards. I can never marry her off or sell her. Why? Hi, my Bishlama Arison, may Arison Shani. Again, I understand in the case where I was Makadesh her, then I lost my right to her. When she comes back to me, I can't sell her. Ain't Shifchas Acharishas. Where she does it herself through Yehud, then I can sell her afterwards. But Nisuin, me Nisuin, me Shani. Nisuin, me Nisuin, we can't, because even though I didn't actively sell her, I didn't actively do the Nisuin. Lamaisa Nisuin, as Rashi says, is Doraisa, and once she does a Nisuin, i.e. Yehud with him, then I don't have a right. The fact that I could sell her to the Kohen Gadol must mean that the Yehud that they did was not Nisuin, it must have been Arison, and the right that I have to sell him is since she chose to do the Arison, so therefore I have the right to sell her afterwards. Ula Rav Nachman by Yitzhak to Amar, Afilu Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Huda Mos HaRishonas Likidushin Nitnu Bimai Mokimla, but according to Rav Nachman by Yitzchak, who holds that the Mos he holds that when I sell her, if she ends up doing Yehud, it's the equivalent of me actually selling her for Kedushin. So what gives me then the right to go ahead and sell her? I, we hold that ain't Shifchas Acharisha. So what's the Gemara going to say? It must be like the man who holds that yes Shifchas Acharisha is according to him. So Mokim Lak Rebbe Lezer, the Amar Le Shifchas Acharisha, who did not Matzi Mizavinla, because he betrayed her. But Le Shifchas Acharisha, Matzi Mizavinla. Shkaya, definitely. Uh, Oh,